Everyone loves Loki, except for Doctor Strange, who left him falling through a magical portal for 30 minutes in Thor Ragnarok. In this video, I'm going to calculate how far Loki fell. Hi there, I'm Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist, and on this channel you're going to find videos about superheroes, Star Wars, and lots of other topics. If you're enjoying this video, please be sure to give it a like, and let's jump straight into that distance calculation for Loki's fall in Thor Ragnarok. In Thor Ragnarok, Thor and Loki head to New York to pick up Odin after Loki left him in a retirement home there and then disguised himself as Odin to take over the throne of Asgard. Confused? Me too. Anyway, when the pair arrive on Earth, Doctor Strange is none too pleased to see that Loki has come back to Earth. Now, the master of the mystic arts decides to open up a magical portal to eliminate the potential threat of Loki and leaves him falling for 30 minutes in that portal. We know that it's 30 minutes because Loki says so after he emerges from the portal. But how did Loki know it was 30 minutes? Was he wearing a watch? Did Doctor Strange provide a clock inside the magical portal for Loki to tell the time with? Well, that small detail isn't very important, but what is important is we know that Loki was falling for 30 minutes. So how do we calculate the distance that Loki fell in the magical portal? Well, what we do is we treat him like a skydiver and we make a couple of quick assumptions. First of all, even though Loki is a frost giant, we're gonna make the assumption that he breathes oxygen just like we do. That will be important for the calculation later on. Secondly, we're also gonna assume that Loki's mass is the same as that of, well, an average sized or slightly above average sized human male. Of course, because he's an alien of sorts, his body could be made from denser materials, but let's not bring that into the calculation. Okay, so let's assume that Loki's fall through the magical portal is exactly the same as that of a skydiver jumping from an airplane. When the skydiver is flying in the airplane in, let's say, the horizontal direction, their velocity in the vertical direction is going to be zero. So they're starting from a velocity in the vertical direction of zero. That's exactly how things started out for Loki because he was stationary on the ground, wasn't moving in any direction, so his velocity in the downward direction was initially zero. In the case of the skydiver, they jump out of the plane and within 10 or 15 seconds, they'll reach a velocity known as terminal velocity. Terminal velocity is the maximum velocity that an object can have as it falls through a fluid or air. So how do we find this terminal velocity? Because if we have this, we can figure out how far Loki fell in that scene. Well, it's time to introduce a little bit of physics. I'm using the example of a skydiver on an airplane, and here is an airplane, and here is the skydiver ready to jump from that perfectly working plane. As the skydiver falls, there are two main forces acting on the skydiver. The first one is the weight, which is related to the mass of the skydiver, and the second is the drag, which is related to the air resistance acting on the skydiver as it moves through the air. When the drag force, which is acting upwards, is equal to the weight, which is acting downwards, there's going to be no acceleration. If there is no acceleration, then there's no change in velocity, and we've reached that really important terminal velocity. Right, to calculate the terminal velocity, I've got to introduce two equations, so bear with me. They're not overly complicated, but this is going to be hugely important for the calculation of the terminal velocity of a skydiver and Loki when he's fallen through that magical portal. Right, there are two forces, drag and weight, and there's an equation for each. First of all, the drag force is acting against the motion and trying to, well, keep the skydiver in the air. The drag acting on a skydiver or any object that's falling through the air can be given by the formula a half rho v squared a c d. There's a few symbols there. I'll go through those in a couple of moments. It's the other one which is much easier, which is the weight. And the weight is just the mass multiplied by acceleration due to gravity. When you're at terminal velocity, the drag is equal to the weight. Now in the formula for the drag, you've got a term 
v, and v in this case is the velocity of the falling object. If you put the drag and the weight equations equal to each other, do some rearranging, you'll end up with this formula for the velocity of the object as it is falling towards the ground, and this will give us our terminal velocity. There's a few symbols in there that need to be accounted for. First of all, you've got CD, which is the drag coefficient. This is a constant related to the type of object that's falling through the air. When it's a person falling towards the ground with belly towards the ground, that coefficient has a value of one. Next up is the mass of Loki or the skydiver. For this calculation, I'm gonna assume that the mass is 90 kilograms. Then there's acceleration due to gravity given by G and that has a value of 9.8 meters per second squared. Next up is the Greek letter rho and that represents the density of air. Now that's really important because earlier on I said the assumption to be taken here is that Loki breathes oxygen and if he's in the magical portal he's going to need oxygen to breathe and if he's falling well let's hope he's falling through air which contains sufficient amount of oxygen. The density of of the air is given by this symbol rho and it's roughly around one kilogram per meter cubed. And finally, A is the surface area of the person's body that is facing the ground as they're falling towards it. And for the calculation, I'm gonna assume that it's 0.7 meters squared. If you put all of those values into that equation, what you'll find is the terminal velocity is roughly around 50 meters per second, which is the same as 180 kilometers per hour. Typically, if the skydiver is really skilled and very good at keeping steady in the air as they fall towards the ground, they can reach a terminal velocity in this belly down position of maybe around 200 kilometers per hour. But let's assume that Loki is an unskilled skydiver and as he's falling through the magical portal, his arms are flailing all over the place. So let's say that the terminal velocity that he has is about 180 kilometers per hour. Right, we've got Loki falling through the magical portal for 30 minutes at a terminal velocity of 180 kilometers per hour. So how far did he fall? Well, we have to make one more assumption about his fall. Remember that he starts from zero velocity and it takes roughly around 10 to 15 seconds for an object to reach a terminal velocity after it starts falling but this time is minuscule in comparison to the time he actually spent falling. So I'm gonna make the assumption that he reaches this terminal velocity instantaneously and spends the whole 30 minutes, 1,800 seconds, falling at 180 kilometers per hour. So if he fell for 30 minutes at 180 kilometers per hour, it means that Loki fell 90 kilometers in that magical portal. And that's just over two full marathons. Thanks for watching this video in relation to Loki's memorable fall in Thor Ragnarok. Be sure to stay tuned for more videos on superheroes, Star Wars, and other topics. And of course, if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to get the latest on notifications on those videos. I've been Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist, and until I see you next time, always think super.